Shalom. I'm Eddie Chumney, if you break Heritage Ministries, and we welcome you to this week's Focus Israel Report. In this week's report, we're going to be sharing with you regarding spiritual insights into Yom Kippur or the Day of Atonement. This is a time of year when Jews in Israel and around the world, along with Christians who follow the Hebraic roots of Christianity or first century Christianity, will be celebrating Yom Kippur or the Day of Atonement. The Hebrew word for atonement, Kippur, is the Strong's number 3725 in the Strong's Hebrew Dictionary. The Hebrew word Kippur comes from the Hebrew root word Kafar, which is the Strong's number 3722, which means to cover, purge, make atonement, make reconciliation, forgive, appease, pacify, or pardon. In Leviticus chapter 16 verse 34 it is written, And this shall be an everlasting statute unto you, to make an atonement for the children of Israel for all their sins once a year. And he did as the Lord commanded Moses. As a result, Yom Kippur is the designated day in the Bible for the God of Israel to forgive his people of their sins. Spiritually, forgiveness of sin comes through the atoning work of Yeshua or Jesus, the Messiah, when he died on the tree or the cross, shedding his blood so that all that repent of their sins and ask Yeshua into their heart and life to be the Savior and Lord of their life can be forgiven of their sins. In 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 21, it is written, For he, that is God, has made him, that is Yeshua, to be sin for us, who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. Historically, the rabbis see Yom Kippur as the day that the God of Israel forgave the sin of the children of Israel for building the golden calf. So how do we understand repentance? One of the Hebrew words for repentance is teshuva. Teshuva comes from the Hebrew root word shuv, which is the Strong's number 7725. And it means to return, turn back, to restore, refresh, or repair. The God of Israel always desires that a person repents. In Ezekiel chapter 18, verses 21 through 23, it is written, But if the wicked will turn from all of his sins that he has committed, and keep all my statutes, and do that which is lawful and right, he shall surely live, he shall not die. All his transgressions that he has committed, they shall not be mentioned unto him. In his righteousness that he has done, he shall live. Have I any pleasure at all that the wicked should die, says the Lord God? and not that he should return from his ways and live? We see the same principle in Second Peter chapter 3, verse 9, as it is written. The Lord is not slack concerning his promise, as some men count slackness, but is long-suffering to usward, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. So what is regarded by the rabbis in Judaism as complete repentance? It is explained by Moses Maimonides, a rabbi of the Middle Ages, in his work, Mishnah Torah, Hilchos Teshuva 2.1, where he explains that somebody who does complete repentance is someone who has sinned and when faced with the same opportunity to repeat his sin, refrains from doing so because he wishes to repent from that sin. Maimonides Further goes on to explain that a sinner should abandon his sinfulness, drive it from his thoughts, and conclude in his heart that he will never do it again. This is based upon the verse in Isaiah chapter 55 verse 7, as it is written, Let the wicked forsake his way, and the unrighteous man his thoughts, and let him return unto the Lord, and he will have mercy upon him, and to our God, for he will abundantly pardon. In repenting of your sin, you should confess the sin that you've committed. In Numbers chapter 5, verses 5 through 6, it is written, The Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel, when a man or woman shall commit any sin that men 
commit to do a trespass against the Lord, and that person is guilty, then they shall confess their sin which they have done. In Psalm 32 verse 5 it is written, I acknowledge my sin unto you, and my iniquity have I not hid. I said, I will confess my transgressions unto the Lord, and you forgave the iniquity of my sin. After King David committed his sin with Bathsheba, the prophet Nathan confronted him. And in doing so, it is written in 2 Samuel chapter 12, verse 13, And David said unto Nathan, I have sinned against the Lord. We are forgiven of our sins through the shed blood of Yeshua. Speaking of Yeshua, in Colossians chapter 1, verse 14, it is written, In whom we have redemption through his blood, even the forgiveness of sins. In Revelation chapter 1, verse 5, And from Yeshua HaMashiach, unto him that loved us and washed us from our sins in his own blood. In confessing our sins, we also need to confess that Yeshua is the Messiah. Romans chapter 10, verses 9 and 10. And if you will confess with your mouth Yahweh Yeshua and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For with the heart man believes unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. In being asked to be forgiven of our sins by the God of Israel through the redemptive work of Yeshua the Messiah, when he shed his blood on the tree or the cross, Yeshua taught that we first need to make reconciliation with our brother. In Matthew chapter 5 verses 23 and 24 it is written, Therefore, if you bring your gift to the altar and there remember that your brother has ought against you, leave there your gift before the altar and go your way. First be reconciled to your brother and then come and offer your gift. Yeshua taught the importance of forgiving others in Matthew chapter 6 verses 14 and 15. For if you forgive men their trespasses, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if you forgive not men their trespasses, neither will your Father forgive your trespasses. As our example, Yeshua forgave those who crucified him. In Luke chapter 23 verse 34 it is written, Then said Yeshua, Father, Forgive them, for they know not what they do. And they parted his raiment and cast lots. In Leviticus chapter 16, it describes that the high priest of the nation of Israel enter into the presence of the God of Israel to make atonement for himself, for his household, and for all the congregation of Israel. Leviticus chapter 16 and verse 17. In the new covenant, Yeshua is our high priest. Hebrews chapter 4 verse 14. Being our high priest, Yeshua is God's mediator between the heavenly Father and men. In 1 Timothy chapter 2 verse 5 it is written, For there is one God and one mediator between God and men, the man, Messiah, Yeshua. As our high priest, Yeshua is not only our mediator, but he's our intercessor and makes intercession for us. Romans chapter 8 verse 34. Because of what Yeshua has done for us in the new covenant, it is written in Hebrews chapter 4 verse 16, Let us therefore come boldly into the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. In the Yom Kippur ceremony specified in Leviticus chapter 16 verse 27, the bullock for the sin offering and the goat for the sin offering was carried outside the camp and burned. This foreshadowed Yeshua who shed his blood on the tree as a sin offering for us and was slain outside the camp. In Hebrews chapter 13 verses 11 and 12 it is written, For the bodies of those beasts whose blood is brought into the sanctuary by the high priest for sin, are burned outside the camp. Wherefore Yeshua, also that he might sanctify the people with his own blood, suffered outside the gate, that is, the gate of the city of Jerusalem. In the high priestly service of Yom Kippur, he's going to change his garments multiple times. So he's going to put off some garments and then put on others. Dirty garments represent the sin 
of the world. And believers in Yeshua as the Messiah are commanded to put off the sin of the world and put on Yeshua. Romans chapter 13 verse 14. Put on Yahweh Yeshua and make no provision for the flesh to fulfill the lusts thereof. Ephesians chapter 4 verse 22. Put off the old man which is corrupt according to deceitful lusts. In verse 24, put on the new man, which after God is created in righteousness and true holiness. Paul repeats this in Colossians chapter 3 verse 9. Put off the old man with his deeds, and instead, verse 10, put on the new man, and in doing so, verse 12, put on bowels of mercies, kindness, humbleness of mind, meekness, long-suffering, and above all, put on love. So Yom Kippur, or the Day of Atonement, not only foreshadows Yeshua, who is our high priest in the New Covenant, and how he would shed his blood to forgive the sins of his people in the world, but prophetically, Yeshua, when he returns at his second coming, will set his feet down on the Mount of Olives, as we're told in Zechariah chapter 14, verse 4, on the Day of Atonement. We can see how his return is associated with the Day of Atonement or Yom Kippur in Isaiah chapter 63 verses 1 and 2. Who is this that comes from Edom with dyed garments from Bozrah? This that is glorious in his apparel, traveling in the greatness of his strength. I that speak in righteousness, mighty to save. The one that speaks in righteousness and who is mighty to save is Yeshua the Messiah. And then it is written in Isaiah 63, verse 2, Why are you red in your apparel, and your garments like him that treads in the wine fat? Isaiah 63, verses 3 and 4, I have trodden the winepress alone, for I will tread them in my anger and trample them in my fury, and their blood shall be sprinkled upon my garments, and I will stain all my raiment. So this is a reference to the high priest that on the Day of Atonement, because of the sacrifices that he performed, his garments were stained in blood. And he took the blood and he sprinkled it upon the altar. It is this Yom Kippur terminology that we see in Isaiah chapter 63, as well as Revelation chapter 19 verse 13, that is associated with the return of Yeshua when he sets his feet down on the Mount of Olives. In Revelation chapter 19 verse 13 it is written, And he, Yeshua, was clothed with a vesture dipped in blood, and his name is called the Word of God. In verse 15 it says, He treads the winepress of the fierceness and the wrath of Almighty God. Well, this is going to conclude our teaching on Yom Kippur, wherein historically the high priest of Israel was instructed to conduct a particular ceremony which resulted in the atonement of his sins, his family, and the nation of Israel. This prophetically pointed to Yeshua, the high priest of the new covenant, who died as a sin offering, wherein he shed his blood when he died on the tree, making it possible that anyone who would repent of their sins and accept Yeshua as their Messiah could receive forgiveness of their sins. In addition, we saw how when Yeshua returns, setting his feet down on the Mount of Olives, it will be on a future Yom Kippur. Until we do it again, Shalom in Yeshua the Messiah. Amen. Amen.